It's a joy to have you on the broadcast today, A Date with Destiny. The title of this message is, For God So Loved the World. For God So Loved the World. Steve Jobs stepped out into the ceaseless ages of eternity on October the 5th, 2011. As I saw the news report come across the screen, the Holy Spirit spoke these words into my heart from Matthew chapter 16, verse 26, when Jesus said, What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Steve Jobs was worth an estimated $8.3 billion when he left this temporary life as we know it today. People Magazine called him the most influential inventor of the digital age. If you have an Apple computer, a Macintosh computer, an iPod, an iMac, an iPhone, or an iPad, you can thank Steve Jobs. If you enjoyed the movie Toy Story, you can thank Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs thought about death all during his life. Listen to what he said, and I quote, We all have a short period of time on this earth. We probably only have the opportunity to do a few things really great and do them well. None of us has any idea how long we're going to be here, nor do I. But my feeling is I've got to accomplish a lot of these things while I'm young. End of quote. Steve Jobs gave the commencement address to Stanford University in June 2005. Listen to what he said, and I quote, No one wants to die. Even people who want to go to heaven don't want to die to get there. And yet death is the destination that we all share. No one has ever escaped it. And that is as it should be. Because death is very likely the single best invention of life. It is life's change agent. It clears out the old to make way for the new. Right now, he states, the new is you. But someday, not too long from now, you will gradually become the old and be cleared away. Sorry to be so dramatic, but it is quite true. End of quote. As I've read about Steve Jobs through the years, I've asked myself this question. How many times did the living God of heaven and earth give to him a clear presentation of the gospel message? How many times did God send people into his life to speak the truth of Jesus and heaven and hell to Steve Jobs. According to People Magazine, Steve Jobs was a Buddhist. A Buddhist believes that absolute truth is an illusion. Reality is defined by personal experience. They believe that there are many paths to God. They deeply feel that salvation is never assured or even possibly. They are virtually atheistic. To them, Jesus was a spiritual leader just like Buddha. Salvation to them is nirvana, a state of oneness with the universe to the extent that the cycle of reincarnation is broken and the self ceases to exist. It can only be achieved through the renunciation of all worldly desires. American culture today is filled with people who constantly think of death because they're lost and their soul is crying out for a right relationship with the Lord Jesus. Today, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. You've never given your heart and you've never given your life to Christ. And at the close of this message, I'm going to give you an opportunity to repent of your sins and ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior by faith. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11, that God has placed eternity in the heart of man. We know before we're ever born that we're going to die. Our Lord uses this fact of life to draw us to Himself. For God so loved the world. The Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And then verse 17 says, For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. God sent Jesus to die on the cross at Calvary for your sins and my sins and the sins of the world. The Bible teaches and history proves that Jesus was in the grave for three days. And after He was in that grave for three days, God brought Him back to life. That's called the resurrection. For God so loved the world. 
Today, I want us to look at this verse as the Spirit of God would have us to look at John 3, 16. First of all today, for God so loved the world. The love that God has for you and for me is endless. The love that God has for you and for me is infinite, meaning never ending. His love is not limited to white people. His love is not limited to black people. His love is not limited to one sect or one special people group. The love of God is for the whole world. His love is indescribable. Neither you nor I can fathom the love that God has for us. Human love cannot compare to the love of God. And He expressed His love by giving His most priceless gift, His Son Jesus, to die on the cross at Calvary. In Romans 5, 8 and 9, the Bible says, But God commends His love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 12 and verse 16, that God is love. He is known by love. Love is His supreme quality. And He can only be known by those who live in His love. Yet neither you nor I would know how, nor could we be able to love Him if He had not first loved us. If we love one another, God abides in us and His love is perfected. His love is matured in us. To live a love-filled life is to be God-filled. And when your heart is supernaturally changed by the transforming power of God, you receive the love of God. Have you ever received the love of Christ? A number of years ago, a dear lady in another city called me and she asked me, to go and see her husband who was dying in the hospital with pneumonia. She'd been praying for him for many, many years. And I went to see this man. And when I walked into his hospital room, he was ready to hear the, about the love of Christ. 62 years of age. And he had lived without Christ all of his life. And I led him to pray, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I need your forgiveness. I know that you died on the cross for me. I repent. I turn from all my sins. Please forgive me. I now accept you as my Savior. And I follow you as my Lord. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. And save me, I pray. I give to you, sweet Jesus, complete control of my life. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. And as soon as that dear 62-year-old man who had lived apart from Christ all of his life prayed to receive Christ, God came into him and touched him and forgave him of all of his sins. He could not stop crying. He must have cried for 20 minutes. And finally, after he got himself together, he called his wife to tell her what Jesus had just done for him. I called him about a week later to see how he was doing, and here's what he said. And I quote, I cannot believe that I lived without Christ all my life. I'm warm inside. I don't hate people anymore. I love people. I used to see people for what I could take from them, but now I see people for what I can give to them. End of quote. That's the testimony of of the transformed heart of a man who's really been touched by the transforming power of God. You let Jesus touch your heart today. For God so loved the world. Secondly today, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Only begotten means only one born. Jesus is the only child born to God. The Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 14, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus was the God-man. He was 100% God, and He was 100% man. He was as much God as He was a man. And God became the human Jesus in order to be able to suffer and die on that cross for you and for me. His death on that cross is payment for your sin and my sin and the sins of the world. God's Son Jesus died for you. He took your place. His suffering there was vicarious. That word vicarious means to take the place of 
of another. God took your place on that cross. He took my place on that cross. No one else could do it. His blood, like His life, was pure and sinless. Jesus loves you. Jesus wants to be your Lord. He wants to be your Savior. Let Him transform your heart today. Twenty years ago, I was getting ready for an appointment. My wife came in to the bathroom as I was shaving, and here's what she said. Katie, who was our eight-year-old daughter, is ready to ask Jesus into her heart. I walked in there, and I saw my little girl seated beside of her mother. She had tears streaming down her face. And I challenged her and I said, Katie, what's wrong with you? And she said, Daddy, you know what's wrong with me. I'm ready to ask Jesus to come into my heart right now. Sit down here beside me and lead me to Jesus. And I showed Katie in the Word of God how she can know without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus loves her and that He wants to be her Savior. And she prayed and she asked Jesus to come into her heart. And He did. And today... 20 years later, she knows without a shadow of a doubt that when she prayed and repented of her sins and gave Jesus her heart and her life, that He truly changed her and He's still the Lord of her life today. Will you let Him be the Lord of your life today? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son thirdly today that whosoever believes in Him, that whosoever believes in Him, to believe is to accept and trust and in faith. You've not seen God. The Bible says that no man has seen God at any time. Therefore, we must trust in God, whom we have never seen, in order to be saved. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. I've seen people down through the years say this, God can't forgive me. You don't know the, the, the evil things that I've done to other people. Yes, God can forgive you and He will forgive you. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, He meaning Jesus is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When you truly repent and you truly ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins, He will forgive you just as if you had never ever sinned. Will you allow Him to do that for you today? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish. Fourthly today, should not perish. The word perish does not mean that you're going to be dead forever. The word perish means an eternity apart from God in a place called hell. The Bible teaches clearly, the Bible teaches unequivocally that hell is a place of eternal torment for people whose names have not been recorded in the Lamb's book of life in heaven. When you repent of your sins and you give Jesus control of your heart and life, He writes your name down in His Lamb's book of life in heaven and it will never ever be erased but if you choose not to respond to the conviction of the Holy Spirit and you choose to reject Christ as your Lord and Savior by faith, He will allow you to make that choice. And then when you leave this temporary life as we know it today, you will live forever in the place called hell. You will not die in hell. You perish in hell. Three times in Mark chapter 9, Jesus states that the worm does not die in hell, nor is the fire quenched. You burn without burning up in hell, and God does not turn the thermostat down one single degree. You're doomed forever when you go to this place called hell. Jesus tells us there's outer darkness in hell. People are, are weeping and gnashing their teeth in hell because of the physical and spiritual torment in that awful place. God sent Jesus so that you and I will not die and live forever in this place called hell. Approximately 2,811 people lost their lives on September the 11th, 2001 in the World Trade Center in New York City. This very day, many of them are crying out from the pits of hell. I waited too late. I waited too late. Approximately 189 people lost their lives in the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., on the morning of September the 11th, 2001. 
this very day, this very moment in time, many of them are crying out from the pits of hell. I waited too late. I waited too late. Approximately 44 people lost their lives in a pasture field in the great state of Pennsylvania on September the 11th, 2001. This very day, this very moment in time, many of them are crying out from the pits of hell. I waited too late. I waited too late. I plead with you today, don't wait too late. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Hell is filled with people who had good intentions to one day repent of their sins and ask Jesus to be their Lord and Savior by faith. But they waited too late. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. Everlasting life is our last point in this message on John 3, 16. I want you to put your name where I'm going to put my name in that verse and I want you to repeat it after me. For God so loved Jeff. You just put your name in there. For God so loved Jeff that He gave His only begotten Son that if Jeff would believe in Him, He would not perish but have everlasting life. Can you say this verse today with the assurance and the peace that you have everlasting life? The word everlasting means eternal. It never ends. An everlasting life for a person who has truly repented of their sins and accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior by faith is heaven. The Bible gives a beautiful description of heaven in Revelation chapter 21. The streets are pure gold. The gates are pearl. The walls are made out of jasper. There's no sadness. There's no sickness. There's no suffering in this beautiful city. No one will ever die. No one will ever starve to death. You have eternal peace in heaven. The Bible says that God wipes away all of our tears in that beautiful city. I know that I'm going to go there one day. When I leave this life, do you have that assurance? Do you have that peace today that you're going to live forever in the place called heaven when you die? It's joy to know that. I heard from a lady just this week who lives in another state. And here's what she said to me. I have peace in my heart that no matter what happens to me in this life, God's never going to leave me. He's never going to forsake me. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that when I leave this life, I'm going to be in heaven forever. Do you have that assurance? Do you have that peace today? Roy Lesson, the great poet, wrote this poem, and I quote, God sent us a Savior. If our greatest need had been information, God would have sent us an educator. If our greatest need had been technology, God would have sent us a scientist. If our greatest need had been money, God would have sent us an economist. If our greatest need had been pleasure, God would have sent us an entertainer. But our greatest need was forgiveness. So God sent us a Savior. Do you have Jesus living inside of you today? You see, many people in life have everything but Jesus. So they really don't have anything. And today you have been trying to fill your heart and life with material possessions and with people. You've gone from relationship to relationship and you're still empty. You see, you've got a hole in your heart. And that hole in your heart has a vacuum in it. And everything that you put in your heart is gone soon after you put it there because the vacuum pulls it out. Only Jesus can come into your heart and never leave. He can fill that vacuum. And when He does, He'll fill your heart with peace and with joy. As the Bible says, that passes all understanding. For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, 
that whoever will believe in him will never perish, but will have everlasting life. No matter where you are right now, no matter what you're doing, I want you to stop right now. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you. He's convicting you. That means He's showing you where you're wrong in your life. And He's showing you the sins in your life today. And the time has come for you to repent of your sins and give your heart and give your life to Jesus right there where you are. I just want you to pray with me right now. You just pray with me right now. Jesus loves you and He's waiting on you. Dear Lord Jesus, just between you and Him, dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and I need your forgiveness. I know that you died on the cross for me. I repent. I turn from all my sins. Please forgive me. I now accept you as my Savior. And I follow you as my Lord. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. And save me, I pray. I give to you, sweet Jesus, complete control of my life. Thank you for saving me. Give me the assurance and the peace that I have been saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. You have just been transformed by the power of God. You've gone from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. You've gone from traveling the road that's paved to an eternity in hell to traveling the road that's paved to a beautiful eternity in heaven. Your name has been written down in the Lamb's book of life in heaven where it will never, ever be erased. You've made the greatest decision a person can ever make. And I'm happy for you and I rejoice with you along with God and Jesus and the angels of heaven. I want to help you in your new walk with Christ. You write to me today. I have some materials that I want to send to you and that I want to encourage you to get involved in a good, balanced, Bible-believing church in the community where you live and ask your pastor to baptize you. I love you. I thank God for you today. And I look forward to seeing you next time on a date with destiny.